Arsenal coming up top of the hour against Sheffield United. Let's get away from that match and think about them a little more big picture. I think there's this feeling, and for some, David, a confidence that this side is different from a year ago, that they're better suited to have a strong finish. What are you feeling around that club? Yeah, I agree with you. They are older, they are wiser, and they are definitely more mature. And that has led to this confidence that you speak of. I do sense that from speaking to people in and around the club, and they will hope that sees them well through to the end of the season. If we take it back to last summer, it's not rocket science. They got their recruitment spot on in terms of Kai Havertz, who you might argue about and different people have different opinions, but he was exactly what they wanted. And they feel right now that they are seeing the fruits of that labor and there is still much more to go. Declan Rice, a British record. He is precisely the player that they wanted for that set central midfield role. And then Durian Timber too. A versatile defender who we've not seen enough of, but they love him and will hope to see him back before the end of the season. And David Raya, who had been a long-term target for Mikel Arteta in goal. He has had a bit of a shaky time of things, but I think we're starting to see the player that Mikel Arteta believed in. There's great tribute there to the likes of Edu as sporting director, Richard Garlick, who works alongside him, who will be promoted to managing director when Vinay Venkateshwam leaves in the summer as chief executive. And also the owners, the Kroenke family, who continue to back this project absolutely and wholeheartedly. We can't take anything away from Mikel Arteta and his staff, in particular Nico Jova, who is the set-piece specialist that... Arteta knew from Manchester City, previously of, Berm uh, of uh, Brentford, and he has really made an impact. You can see that in the results. Their fitness, they have had injuries, of course, but they have coped really well with them. And crucially, they have kept William Saliba fit so far. His loss towards the end of last season is attributed by many at the club to the fall away that we saw. Um, Let's see if they can keep him fit this time around because he is critical. They had their break in Dubai where they reset. Their metrics were fine, even though the results were not coming. They trusted in the process. They made a few tiny tweaks and then post Dubai, they have hit the ground running. The big test is still to come, of course, but they're in really good shape. They've managed their contracts extremely well. The likes of Saliba was like a new signing, Saka, uh, Martin Odegaard too, and there will be more to come in the form of Tommy Asu and Ben White as well. So Arsenal are looking pretty, but massive matches ahead, including against the likes of Manchester City, but they've beaten them once already, which they didn't the season before. So good reasons wherever you look. And no matter where it goes the rest of this month and then into April and then also into May, let's look ahead a little bit. And you mentioned how well the club has been backing this project uh, financially and roster wise. What might be coming this summer? Well, it's no secret that Arsenal's big target, as I understand it, is a new centre forward, somebody for that number nine position. And they will be linked with many players. They already have been, and that's not going to go away. They will be doing all of their due diligence, of course. Uh, my understanding is it's names such as Benjamin Sesko at RB Leipzig, um, uh, Victor Gokoresh at Sporting Lisbon, Evan Ferguson at Brighton and Hove Albion. Although he's not had such a good season and his price will continue to be extremely high, you would suspect because Brighton are such good sellers and a number of others too because there are strikers in the market even though I always talk on NBC about how there is a greater demand than supply at the moment and other clubs in the market too but I think Arsenal will present a pretty compelling case these days with their progress under Mikel Arteta. I think in midfield they'll look to do something as well. That may depend on departures for the likes of, I don't know, Emile Smith-Rowe's been talked about a lot. Thomas Partey, there's a decision to make on the future of Jorginho, who uh, they have an option to extend the contract of, but they haven't done so just yet. And that will determine whether they bring in maybe a number six, they like Martin Zubamendi at uh, Real Sociedad, but also a number eight if they decide, no, actually, that's a better position for us. And where will Declan Rice play long term? Will he be in the six or the eight? A wide player has long been on the agenda to back up the likes of Bakayo Saka and Gabriel Martinelli. They do like Pedro Neto at Wolves, so do many other clubs. We've talked about that on NBC and the price will be high. There's also concern around his injury, so they will have other options. They'll look to do something, no doubt, in the back line as well, because there may be some departures at left back, such as Nuno Tavares. 
Also, Alexander Zinchenko will have a year to go on his contract. What will they do around that? He's been injured a lot too. There are other players who, who we've got to see what happens with their future. The likes of Sambi Lukonga in midfield has impressed on loan at Luton. Uh, Fabio Vieira has not played as much as he would have liked, partly because of injuries. And also Aaron Ramsdale, the big question around him in goal. He's lost his place to David Raya, and I think you would expect him to move on in the summer because he'll want to be playing first-team regular football. Arsenal will have to manage their finances carefully. Their latest results came out recently and showed how close they've been to the line on financial fair play. But you suspect there will be a little bit of room to manoeuvre, and that makes this a really busy summer ahead at the end. Emirates Stadium, a really critical one as they look to continue to compete with the likes of Manchester City, Liverpool, Resurgent, Manchester United perhaps, Chelsea, Tottenham hot on their heels as well. But again, what we've talked about in terms of last season to this and the summer going forward, Arsenal are in decent shape. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.